Welcome back programmers, Guillaume here. Another episode on the text editor of Pure Basic, and this time on what I've called the productivity tools of the editor. So let's have a look. First, zooming. Yes, if you want to improve your productivity, you want to be faster, you want to see better, so you can use control and the mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out to adapt the size. Well, I'm 46, so I have glasses. I rather use huge font like this. I zoom in a lot. You can also use Ctrl plus to zoom in, Ctrl minus to zoom out, and of course, to reset to 100%, Ctrl zero. Okay, that's for the zooming. One very important feature of a source code editor, like Pure Basic, is syntax highlighting. What is this? It's just the fact of putting the different keywords and different type of, um, of text, for example, keywords or viable names or constant name or comments in different colors so you can see them better. It's more legible and this way you understand faster what is going on the screen. I don't personally like those colors. They are kind of plain. And you can use file preferences. You can go there and in editing, coloring, editor, coloring, you can choose whatever color you want. Here you have default schemes, so you can select each type of text per type of text, background, background for text files, cursor, selection, selection background, etc. You can select a different color. You just click on the ellipsis button here. You have this color speaking, color picker, and you can choose whatever color you want. Here I change the selection background. If I apply this, and I select, it will be now purple, dark purple. Um, you can have, there are some defaults, Pure Basic, for example, or Visual Studio. If you apply that, you see in the background, it's all gray. It looks like Visual Studio in the light uh, version. Black style, you can say that, okay, apply the black style. Okay, it's very dark. The thing is, with that, is you cannot save uh, whatever color. If you select some specific colors, like I did, and you want to put, you want to save them and reuse them, if, or you want to share them with some friends, well, you can't. Well, actually, you can, but you need to know how. So, I have discovered that there is a folder in which all those options are kept. So, um, see users, your username, app data, roaming, pure basic, and you get those files. One of them is purebasic.prefs. And if you look at the purebasic.prefs, open with Notepad++, uh, purebasic.prefs, you see that you have different features here, and at some point, you have the colors here, okay? So if you change in the preferences, if you change one of the colors, um, what do we have? Background color here, background color. It's black. Let's change it to wow, this very nice pink, apply, okay, ooh, very nice, and if I go back to my, here, the, it says that the file has been modified, yes, I want to reload it, and my background color is now this new color, it's not black anymore, it's not zero anymore, it's this color, which is very nice. I need to go back to the preferences, to the coloring, and 
put back pure basic as the default one. And here, back to here, it has changed to the default colors. Okay, so if you want to save your colors, you just go here, you go in the preferences, you put whatever color you want, and so here, coloring, okay, you set all the colors that you want as you want, and what you do is that you go in the folder I told you, which is C users, your username, app data, roaming, pure basic, and you open the pure basic prefs.prefs file. And in the editor section here, you have the colors from the ASM keyword color to the plain background. You can copy paste this, okay, in a separate file and you'll get your colors saved. I did the same personally in pure programming colors.txt. Okay, see, I have my colors here until the plain background, which is actually zero. Control A, Control C. I replace this in my file. Where is it? It's in editor. I told you from plain background to ASM keyword color. Control V. I have my own color. I just have to save and then restart pure basic. Let's see if this works. Pure basic. It does not work at all. Okay. Why is that? I have no idea. It say that the file has changed. Oh yes, I know why. I do know why. Um, okay, let's reload it. You need to close Pure Basic, copy your colors, paste them wherever you want. Not wherever you want, <laughs> paste them in the purebasic.prefs file like this. Save your file and then you can restart Pure Basic here and you get the colors that you have selected, okay? That's only for the text, so I like those colors. Um, but you can also change, just for the sake of it, because you can also change the colors of those tools. Um, how to do that? Tools panel, options, use custom colors, and you want to use these colors here. So, front color, I want some bright green, and back color, I want painted black. Apply. Okay, and that's my pure basic. I like it this way, dark. So, syntax highlighting. It's the fact that every keyword, every word type will have its own color. But look, you see the, sorry, <laughs> double click on include file, of course. You see the structure here is bold. Declare is bold. Procedure if all keywords are bold. Once again, in the preferences, editing, Enable bolding of keywords if you uncheck this and you apply all the keywords now look at here all the keywords are not bold regular if I enable the bolding boom they're back to bold that's good to know um, another thing from the preferences I'm sorry but it's the coloring, you have all those custom colors, that those are mine, okay? And you can add more keywords. I could add, oh, pure programming. That's a keyword, okay? Add, okay? That's a keyword. If I apply this, now, if I type, 
sorry, pure programming, it's bold because it's a keyword. Okay, so that's a way if you have words that you want to display in bold, you can set them as keywords, custom keywords, and they will appear as bold in your code. So, syntax highlighting. So next, matching keywords and matching braces. Okay, matching keyword. Look at that. If I put my cursor on a keyword, it will automatically highlight both keywords, or not both, but all matching keywords. Remember, there can be many of them, like in the if, else, else, if, and if kind of structure. Let's see here. If, okay. So procedure and procedure if, else, and if. And even for the procedure, if we look here, you have the procedure, procedure return and end procedure. They're all matching keywords. So here you have a, a very small pink underline, which for all keywords here, and that means that they are matching, okay? Procedure and procedure, if, else, and if. And you can actually remember, you can navigate from one to the other using the control K, Control K shortcut to move between matching keywords. But to highlight the keywords, you see this pink underline. Actually, the color is in the preferences. Once again, everything is configurable with pure basic. Editing here, not editing, coloring. One of the colors that you can choose here is mark matching braces and keyword. You can even mark the mismatched okay with a different color so I've, I've selected a pink just so we can see it more clearly matching keywords matching braces is the same if you put okay on an opening parenthesis it will highlight the closing one see the image here same thing if you put on the cursor next to a closing parenthesis it will show you the opening one it works for um, square brackets as well as curly brackets see you can see it's highlighting i know it doesn't mean anything but if i s put my cursor on a curly bracket it will automatically highlight the matching one same for square brackets parentheses as well that can be useful to help you see what is where exactly and what is matching with what if you are calling some procedures and within it the parameters are also calling procedure which are calling procedure which are calling procedure just like here for example you want to be sure that this first parenthesis is the same and if instead the parenthesis you put here let's say a square bracket see it's not matching so it's red if it's matching it's pink if it's not matching it is red that's because I've selected those colors myself so matching keywords with the underline matching braces with the specific color here for both braces next is autocomplete that's one that is very useful when you're coding when you're writing code here we have the fill status bar procedure. If I start typing fill, three letters, and then you have this drop down that appears. You can navigate within it every um, custom made procedure or command in Pure Basic will appear that starts with the same three letters fill, F I L, here will show up in the list and you can navigate with the up and down arrows and select with the tab key fill status bar that's the autocomplete it is opening automatically when you reach three characters fill if you don't want to have this if you want to hide it escape key you will hide this drop down there are some preferences for this as well, file preferences. 
autocomplete editor autocomplete you have some options you can display the full list with all commands you can display only words that that start with the first character or that start with the beginning of the already typed word three characters okay you can automatically pop up the the drop down for structures for modules or even for any three characters that are typed you have some the size of the box etc etc very once again you can configure that as you want if let's say it's configured for three characters but you want to find all that start with just two control space will open this box with the matching words okay fi that works if you did l like this and you say escape oh no what why uh, control space and you get the list you can select it with the tab key once again okay so autocomplete is dynamic meaning okay fill title and status bar fill title and status bar you can access any procedure that you will create yourself or macro directly okay macro ah. foobar even like this and macro and then i can say foo and i get the foobar it's dynamic you don't have to wait you don't have to run anything it will work as soon as you write a new procedure a new macro it will appear in this autocomplete um, list so this uh, autocomplete list of procedures or functions or keywords even macros and stuff like that um, they are include all the uh, custom procedures and macros of the file that are contained in the same project even if you include a file uh, using the include file a, a file that has a procedure it will not import the procedure in the autocomplete list it will only import those four files that are in the same project that's it for the autocomplete i don't see anything more to say next is the folding feature what is the folding well it's the the fact that you can have here this little minus box the box with the minus just like a tree view if you click on it it will fold it will hide whatever text is within it sometimes it's most of the time it's between not most of the time it's between two matching keywords you can just here fold the procedure and it will fold it it will fold to only one line a one liner which is nice because here you just have the uh, the header the, the prototype of the procedure and you don't have to know how it's done inside it's just okay you know there is a procedure called field title and status bar but if you unfold it if you expand it you'll see that what's inside folding by default procedure can be folded um, in the preferences you have the list of keywords that you can fold here editor folding you can enable or not the folding within pure basic if you apply that you'll see all my boxes are disappear enable source line folding here compiler if you are all the keywords that the start keywords and the end keywords you can add more and what i've learned actually from this particular screen is that semicolon curly bracket semicolon curly bracket will force well will make you make a folding section so you can fold basically anything by just adding let's say here i will add semicolon curly bracket which is a comment and you can add here for some reason semicolon um, closing curly bracket 
and here when you fold it will fold between these two oops you can fold and you can put a comment here um, folding test and you see if I fold I have my comment that stays but the whole code within it is folded so you can just semicolon curly bracket fold whatever section of text that you want I think that's pretty neat um, so folding helps you you know improves uh, legibility of your code if you have a very big file you shouldn't have a very big file but if you have a very big file here my file is already more than a thousand lines it's way too long okay it's a test and it's not a test but it's I should have divided this file into several smaller files to improve legibility and to find my way between files instead of having to scroll up and down that's much better so I could say I could decide to 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 fold structures for example structures definition preferences again editor folding if I decide to add structure here and end structure there I guess I can now fold the structures look at that my structures can be folded very nice that's it for the folding and the next productivity feature that I find very useful is the fact that you can have in the status bar some help so here any pure basic command if you put the cursor within the uh, braces here you see in the help you have in the status bar you have a short help on the function on the procedure use jpeg image decoder enable the jpeg support for catch image load image etc and that's true for on close no this is custom made but if you're using image width for example you get here image width in bold you have the current parameter on which the cursor is and return some help on um, the uh, command itself return the width in pixel the image of the image uh, set gadget state so this has two parameters set gadgets uh, come on set gadget state you see first parameter is gadget second parameter is state change the gadget current state and if I put my cursor on the second line second one it will put in bold the second parameter telling me that my image ID is actually the state that I'm passing to the set gadget state so this is a very helpful feature if you want to know the parameter set gadget attribute when you start okay when you start set gadget attribute 3d you don't know what these are you open the parenthesis and then boom as soon as the parenthesis is opened you have the list of attributes and whatever the function is doing change the specified gadget 3d attribute you have to pass the id of the gadget 3d the attribute and the new value so you don't have to go all the time to the help um, if you know and sometimes you just don't know ex the exact syntax of uh, the command okay set you know it's a, sorry you know it's a set something attribute set active gadget so this is with the autocomplete and once you have the full uh, set active gadget parenthesis boom oh set active gadget I have to give the gadget ID that is a very useful feature just a quick you know at a glance you look at the status bar and you know what are the parameters how many parameters and from their names what they are and if you want you even love you know this short line of help and if you still don't understand what is going on you can still go to the help with the f1 and you will get the full help on this specific command wow <laughs> that's a lot 
that's a lot for today. Uh, so productivity tool, zooming, syntax highlighting, matching keyword and braces, folding and autocomplete, and help in the status bar. All these features help you uh, with your coding, help you be being more productive, being faster, your code being more legible and stuff like that. So, uh, so those are good features. And that's it for the productivity features of Pure Building. That's it for today. Remember, subscribe, comment, like, the usual YouTube stuff. Um, and also, don't forget to check out uh, my blog. It's not been updated in a while, but I will, I promise. Uh, check out the new store uh, from which you can buy Pure Basics through the shop.pure-programming.com. And, well, that's it. Thank you all for watching. I will see you soon.